then between the youngster Kieran Farrell and the experienced Yusuf Al Hamidi, uh, Farrell identified by the uh, the bald head, well the shaven head anyway, and of course the words Farrell across the back of his uh, shorts. Alongside me, Craig Turner, looking for this one, uh, uh, youth against experience here, Craig. That's right, Nigel, and uh, cagey start there by uh, Al Hamidi, as you'd expect from a man of his, um, of his experience, and um, young Kieran Farrell at 21. Uh, looking to make an aggressive start. Yeah, from Haywood in Lancashire, of course, so here at Oldham, just down the road, so very much the local boy, and uh, looking to get off to a bit of a whirlwind start if he can against Al Hamidi, chasing him around the ring, and actually Al Hamidi for a 34-year-old showing a little bit of nimble footwork. That's right, yeah. 34-year-old um, Al Hamidi, as you can see, he can box a little bit, he's nobody's fool and uh, making the youngster work for his money there. Nice aggressive shot. Two-handed, you can tell he's a heart fighter. <laughs> well, he's uh, certainly starting out, and I know uh, he thinks Ricky is uh, an absolute idol of his, and not surprisingly, he wants to try and emulate some of that. Doesn't lack confidence, does Kieran Farrell, and he's, he's got a bit of a bang in those two fists of his, and he, he's not afraid to throw them, as you can see. That's right, good variety there. Jab, the right hand, left uppercut putting the shots together and chain the uh, combination and uh, yeah very nice confident first start yeah he's uh, as we'll hear later I'm sure he's not unconfident in the way he speaks he goes under the nickname of Vicious and likes to live up to that as well uh, and I don't think he will take too much messing from Al Hamidi but likewise I think Al Hamidi will think hey let's teach this upstart a little bit of a lesson absolutely yeah He's uh, master of his trade, and uh, you can tell there he knows a few tricks now that how to survive. But uh, Kieran doing the right thing, cutting off the ring, cutting down Al Alhamidi's movement, uh, looking to switch the body and the head. Clever there from Alhamidi, as you'd expect from a man of that experience. Last time out, uh, Farrell fought Sid Rezak, who we've seen so many times on Hatton TV. Uh, different sort of journeyman fighter, and, and this is with due respect to Alhamidi, of calling him a journeyman, but with a, a losing record but uh, Razak much more uh, compact, whereas Al Hamidi a bit more flashy, a bit probably like an older version of Kieran Farrell. <laughs> That's right, entirely. Um, I'd suggest he probably hasn't got the dig that Kieran has, um, but he's boxing quite intelligently and he's doing the right thing against uh, the aggressive Farrell. Uh, some nice shots there from Farrell, a body shot up to the head. It's a cagey start, you'd expect from an inexperience, but uh, aggressive and uh, a nice confident way to begin. Yeah, as you said, ag aggression is nine tenths of what he does, and he's you know he's hunting his man down, isn't he? There's first of six rounds, and uh, you know he, he kept the pressure on him really, didn't he? That's right. I think that the, especially early doors, although he's had 11, 11 contests now as a professional, um, early doors it is um, very difficult to shake off the amateur sprint because we know amateur boxing is a sprint and pro is a marathon. But uh, he seems very very um, educated and uh, you know. Willing to have a look at the guy, not rushing in, and uh, planting his feet, picking his shots. Yeah, 10 wins out of 10 so far for Kieran Farrell in his uh, pro career. As I said, from Haywood in, in Lancashire, so not too far for his fans to come. And he has got a growing fan club as well. You can understand why they, they would latch on to him, because he, he's got an exciting style, hasn't he? Very much so. It's a case of don't blink, isn't it? You know, he's uh, two-fisted, two-handed, um, like our channel's namesake <laughs> promoter. And uh, as I say, very exciting, sells tickets. Yeah, and uh, likes to be on the big stage. This is the big stage, but this is very much on the undercard, this one. But 
uh, late in the evening here. Kieran Farrell looking to uh, entertain the crowds who stayed on to watch him and he's certainly going to reward them but uh, a little bit of uh, rabbit punching there as uh, Hal Hamidi turned away. Dig in the kidneys. The referee didn't uh, worry too much about it and we're back in action again. Once again Farrell looking to cut down the ring, not give Al Hamidi room to uh, manoeuvre, but he's going to catch up with him eventually and turning it back, he's not well advised, is it? <laughs> Absolutely not. He's probably a very, very good body puncher by the looks of things. And uh, knows a few tricks his, himself as well for a novice professional. He knows to keep the head down and, and they all count as long as you can get away with them. Yeah, that's right. And um, just looking back through the, the record, uh, obviously Al Hamidi is l used to losing now. He, he, uh, he's been busy this year, but uh, earlier in the year, back in September, he, he did beat Johnny Greaves, another uh, journeyman fighter. But uh, apart from that, he's, uh, he's had plenty of outings and plenty of losses. But, um, you know, he's, he's, he's no mug, is he, there? And he, he's, he's got a lot of ring craft, and he knows his way around the ring. Probably been in with some good boys. Lee Selby, who's an outstanding amateur. Uh, Nicky Cook, who we've all heard of. You know, so he's been around. He's been he mixed in good company, good company. Good, great test here for young Kieran. Originally from Syria, Al Hamidi, uh, but now based in Dewsbury in Yorkshire. Bigger contrast, I don't, can't imagine at the moment. But um, at the moment, this Battle of the Roses then from either side of the, the Pennines going decisively, I would suge suggest the Lancastrian way as Kieran Farrell keeps up the pace again. Just what a busy fighter. And, and you would imagine over six rounds that uh, he's going to keep up the, the pace and maybe Al Hamidi at 34 is uh, going to feel the effects a little bit. Very much so. He's going to earn his money. Um, it's going to make a good test for Kieran. Uh, but at the moment he seems just too aggressive and too strong for Al Hamidi. And uh, he's taken both rounds for my money to, to, uh, so far. Right. He's not exactly uh, a, a big frame, is he though, Farrell? You know, he's, he's well built, but he's, uh, you know, for the power that he seems to be generating, uh, you know, he's, he's a bit, bit skinny, frankly. Well, that's right. I mean, but you can see the first placement. It's a wide stance, and he plants his feet and almost jumps behind the shot, um, which can in later contests lead him into trouble if he's not careful, because he might jump onto a shot. However, he's got an excellent weight distribution with his feet, and that, uh, that makes for a puncher. And you would imagine, you know, he's only 21 as he lands another solid right hand there. He's only 21, you, you imagine, you know, he's, he's got a couple more years of filling out, isn't he? So he'll probably move up a weight division or two. I should imagine so. And uh, obviously at the, at the moment what we're seeing is uh, uh, a boy in with a man. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but uh, in terms of maturity, uh, Kieran physically has a lot more maturing to do. Whereas Al Hamidi obviously has uh, already reached that point. Yeah, well, Kieran Farrell there, I think, said a word or two to his opponent. Um, never short of a word or two is, uh, is Kieran, I have to say. A uh, very personable young man, but uh, brash and confident, and they're not bad traits to have, uh, as long as you can control them and use them at the right time. Very much so, especially for a boxer. You have to have that, that confidence to know that you, you, uh, you can get into the ring and, and deliver what you promise. Um, so uh, if he's got those traits, and as you say, Moses, it's harnessed in the right way, then it's uh, Ali Balasad. Yep, so we wait to see uh, what comes up in round number three. As I say, late in the evening here now, but the, uh, the crowd have stayed on to watch uh, an eye-catching uh, young prospect who uh, next year, in 2012, will be looking to uh, perhaps challenge maybe for an English title or something like that. Uh, as part of his uh, stepping stone to what he sees as a route to the top. At the moment he's got Al Hamidi to deal with. And he's hunting him down. Yeah, he's nice and relaxed there, as I say, for a novice professional. Nice and relaxed. The hands are a little bit lower than you expect. He's paid for it there. But, mm. you know, he's uh, learned from it, got his hands back up. And uh, he really does deliver with, with some venom. Commentator's curse that was, wasn't it? Just he was saying how well he was doing, and then he uh, he shipped a shot. But um, he, he reminds me a little bit, and, th and this is partly because of the shaman head of uh, somebody from your neck of the woods, Glenn Catley. Yeah, very much so. Glenn, um, much bigger frame than Kieran, as you'd expect from a super middleweight. But uh, yeah, you're right, Lucky Lucky. Not not a bad person to model yourself on. A bit a bit of Glenn Catley, a bit of Ricky Hatton, you probably go quite a long way. Oh, he's an absolute gentleman. Both guys, personable, 
and give boxing an absolutely fantastic name, which is what we're all about. But for the moment, it's uh, Kieran Farrell looking to deal with Yusuf Al Hamidi. You're watching it here on Hatton TV, and uh, Al Hamidi just bending at double almost to get out of the way. To be fair to him, he's not spoilt too much at the moment. He's uh, he's been on his toes, going backwards most of the time, just dancing out of the way of the uh, assault from Kieran Farrell. Switches direction, goes left this uh, goes right this time. He's just using all the the, the ring apron, isn't he, uh, Al Hamidi at the moment? Whereas Farrell is there in the centre of the ring, just swivelling to to meet the challenge, and now he's got him in the middle of the ring, but. The uh, wily old pro Al Hamidi just uh, spoiling a little bit at that point. That's right. He's trying to trying to box an octopus, basically, isn't it? You know, he can use the, the distance when he gets inside. He can tie the man up, and uh, he's one of these guys that makes a good kid look bad, night. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not succeeding at the moment because Farrell is looking pretty bright and just keeping up this furious pace. I like the head movement from Farrell there, as you can see, he goes to the left foot, delivers a left shot over to the right side. As I say, perfect balance. And uh, as much about defence as it is offence, Nigel, as you're aware. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to get hit too often, do you? And if you can then uh, use it as a launch pad to score yourself, you're halfway to getting the job done. There's a good left uppercut that uh, Al Hamidi virtually ducked into. And he just, he just must be feeling the pressure, Al Hamidi, obviously, because Farrell's been on him right throughout the contest. And here we are, what, nearly at the end of the third round, and it's just been non-stop from, from the youngster. That's right. Supremely fit. Um, I mean, the three rounds now, no problems whatsoever. Um, I suggest the next three, you keep the same pace up, if not extend it. Another hard stare at the end of the round there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if uh, looks could kill, as they say. But uh, Kieran Farrell uh, must be halfway to what would be his 11th pro win started uh, back in 2009 so uh, the, the, the couple of years have flown by and he probably does feel like he's ready to to launch himself to, to, to bigger and better things I know it's early early days from watching him but uh, would you would you think that uh, come 2012 that uh, he could be stepping up and maybe challenging for a belt or two? Absolutely. He's got everything you need for, for a professional star. You need to be able, you need that star quality, Knight. And as, a, as you say, he's got the personality, he's certainly got the appeal, and he fights, and he's got the right promotion and management behind him. So, absolutely, the world is open to him. It's picking the right opponents, obviously, uh, but because he's boxed a certain level of opponent up till now. Maybe Al Hamidi just slightly above what he's boxed previously. But uh, he's just going to step up in class and he'll find out more about himself, I'm sure. It's a nice uh, front hand lead there from him, screw shot up under the guard. And he knows a few tricks. He's uh, been well schooled in the pro art of uh, leaning on his man and not getting in any, any trouble. We don't want any eye damage or anything like that on the inside. So uh, it's, a good, it's a mature performance for one uh, who's not that experienced. Yeah, and Al Hamidi. <laughs> twisting it like an octopus to get away from him just as well he hasn't got eight eight tentacles but um, <laughs> at the moment he's uh, he's very nifty on his feet is Al Hamidi I'm impressed by his stamina at this stage I was expecting him to tire maybe a little bit more by now but uh, particularly with the body shots that Farrell's been raining in on him in the early rounds oh that one looked like maybe hurt him a little bit He's on his bike there, Nigel, doing the right thing. He was clipped and he did get hit, so... Uh... So Farrell uh, just trying to uh, get to grips with him. Sense that uh, maybe this is the opportunity you can really step it up and punish him with a few more of those body shots and Alpha Midi senses it too and skips out of the way once more. That's right, good feint there with the upper body and the right hand came through. So technically he's very correct as well, Kieran. Um, and as I say, the main draw is, is the punch. I think once he, once he settles down and really starts finding these guys out, we're going to see some explosive contests from him. Yep, and uh, a few more little uh, punches round the back from, from Farrell, the referee not getting involved, but not, not afraid to uh, take advantage of any situation. If his opponent turns away from him, well, just... 
give him a couple of digs just to let him know he's still there. You know, he's not he's not in any sort of awe of Alhamidis. He's not stepping away and um, admiring what his opponent's doing, or even to that extent, when he lands a good shot, he's not stepping away and admiring it. He's just concentrating on finding the next one. Which is good news for the management and trainer because uh, if he stood off this kind of guy, then it'd be a long night's work with the style that uh, Kieran's got. Good right hand, and uh, I think if he really put his shots together, he could he could even uh, force a stoppage here. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I bet you've seen quite a few youngsters, haven't you, who are you know, pretty good and think they're pretty good, who, who do do that, you know, land a decent punch and spend the next 30 seconds thinking, yeah, that was great. Oh, absolutely, and um, you, you see an awful lot of good amateur prospects that Jack can't make the transition to pro, because it's two different games entirely. A cutie pie tap tap runaway boxer of the amateur wouldn't last in a professional ring. As I said before, amateur boxing the sprint, professional boxing the marathon, another round for Farrell. Yeah, yes, certainly an emphatic performance by the youngster here. We're at Oldham at uh, the Leisure Centre, and maybe um, well, I'm sure Kieran Farrell dreams of uh, bigger venues. Maybe the MEN Arena stepping up in a year or two's time, perhaps on a big title show, and then Vegas and beyond. That's right, ODB 21 again, Nigel. <laughs> oh, are well, you not? No, 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 that was last year. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, Exciting to see young prospects coming up. That's the that's the important thing um, to see them succeed as well. Because, as you say, the, the amateurs, there are, you know, quite a few good young uh, youngsters who maybe don't fulfil their potential, perhaps for whatever reason it is. And and likewise, you know, there are, there are one or two professionals who, who who might get the big build up and then don't deliver. But Farrell seems to be uh, well on top of that and. The confidence of youth, I suppose. He's, uh, but he's able to back it up with his skills. Very much so. As you see, trotting out from the corner there, confident start, words of wisdom, absolute faith in his corner, I would suggest, and uh, out for another round's work. So, this is the fifth of six rounds. Kieran Farrell just keeping up that momentum, pressure all the time, just trying to trap Al Hamidi in a corner. Sending him back into the neutral corner there now, but Al Hamidi just with that fluent reverse gear and he's uh, just dancing out of the way as much as he can. Maybe just not quite as much up on his toes now, a little bit more back on his heels than he was in the early rounds, but still moving sufficiently to keep Farrell at bay. Farrell trying to land that vicious right hand. He's picking his spots, fainting well, upper body faint to the left and trying to whip the right hand over the top, keeping the head moving, moving targets, excellent, excellent work. But at this stage, I'm pretty certain that Kieran's got in his mind, let's try and end this early. Um, but he's up against a, a tough customer, one who's, you know, by no, well, he certainly is a moving target, I was going to say by no means static, but he's, he's definitely a moving target. And, uh, the, it's just a matter of how much, how often in each round Kieran actually manages to get to him. It would be interesting to have one of those statisticians who sits there with the stopwatch to know just how how much of the round was spent with Farrell actually landing shots. Yeah. If only he's having a breather. Farrell trying to oh, throw him in there. Yeah, that's that's uh, a little cheeky, isn't it? It's the exuberance of youth. Uh, trying to get his man to lead to him, trying to get him to, uh, to open up. So, uh, a bit of killology there. It's no bad thing, as you said, it was confidence. Disrespectful, well. maybe? Um, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't Kieran's intention. I'm no. sure he was just trying to get uh, <laughs> Alhamidi to lead to him, really. But, uh, as I say, there are opponents that you definitely would not do that in front of. <laughs> no, and it's maybe, you know, not too wise to just uh, rest your arm on the rope, if uh, truth be told, but... Anyway, no, no harm done, and Kieran Farrell, at the end of the fifth round, just again trying to land some telling blows and try and get this man out of here. But somehow, I suspect Al Hamidi has got the uh, the legs and the stamina to last this one out. I oh, thought for a moment I hadn't heard the bell, but uh, Farrell just resets himself, goes for a little wander, and then back into it. What was that? What was that all about? A momentary. Lack like of concentration, change of tactic, what was it? I, don't I know. think it's possibly a little bit of kidology, uh, making uh, Yusuf um, think that the round was over and perhaps walk into him. Um, 
he fooled me anyway and there is the bell to, to end the round uh, three minutes remaining and uh, you'd think all five rounds have gone to Kieran Farrell at this stage remember he's only 21 we're making a lot of his youthfulness but uh, he's five foot seven nicknamed Vicious and probably a name that you should be marking down in your in your diary as one to watch in the next couple of years you'll be on quite a few Hatton promotion shows I'm sure and uh, I'm sure the, the fans will enjoy watching him um, some big fights ahead for him and lots of potential to, to fulfill very much so a steady increase he'll, uh, he'll keep progressing this is very much his apprenticeship into professional boxing and uh, been very well handled good opponent in the Yusef Al Hamidada yep definitely uh, should give him full marks he's uh, not going to come away with a, a victory from this one. Lost last time out against Chris Hughes at, uh, up in Scotland uh, just about a month ago, less than a month ago in fact, uh, a couple of weeks back. So, um, you know, he's, he has been busy in 2011. Payday is important though for fighters at this level and he's been earning regularly. Once we get to this stage, obviously doesn't want to be stopped either because that uh, just stops the flow of cash as well. And if you... Uh, get a mandatory suspension so it's uh, Al Hamidi just keeping out of harm's way if he can Farrell looking to finish the job off another good shot inside there he's hooking around the guard again another hat and characteristic yeah, there yeah very much so and uh, as you can see he's coming under the guard down to the body drop the hand come over the top beautiful to watch when it's done properly it's very fluent, isn't he? That's the, the thing about him. That's a lovely right hand. That was fantastic. Well timed, just under the left hand there. Uh, screw shot up underneath. And uh, I suggest that uh, Al Hamidi felt that one. Yeah, uh, as I say, timing is the essence of good comedy, but it's also the essence of good sport, isn't it? You know, be it cricket or, or even football and, and boxing as well. If you time your shot, your volley, your, your punch, uh, it, it can, it can, you know, double the effect of it if you time it properly, can't it? Oh, very much so. And uh, you catch the guy coming on, and uh, that's job done. Ricky Hart looking on with interest there. Yeah, I'm sure Ricky will be delighted with this showing from young Kieran. Al Hamidi just uh, standing tall. I think a little bit of the magic roundabout there. I think uh, Kieran's dishing out a little bit of uh, his own medicine now, to be honest with you, messing the guy around a little bit, making him think. Lovely change of angle there on the counter. Three or four fights time, that would have landed, and that would have been all she wrote. Yeah, yeah. So, coming towards the end of uh, what's been a, an interesting and entertaining contest, the result's never been in doubt, but we're just maybe looking at a, a future star in the making here. Don't want to build him up too much because uh, we know what happens to British sportsmen and women when that happens but uh, he's got he's got all the capabilities he's got the packages there isn't it if he can just uh, put it all into into play in the in the coming years very much he can rely on his boxing as well you can see the switch hits he's a good strategician he looks back oh that's clever <laughs> that's clever yeah yeah just calming things down a little bit referee there Again, the exuberance of youth. I think there was a little apology from Kieran there, actually, and now now the media being lectured as well. Don't think it will spoil the the contest overall. And there is the bell, so it was just near the very end, and actually, in the end, a little bit of respect, I think, and uh, Kieran Farrell gets the, the verdict. And uh, they give one another a little hug. And your uh, final conclusions there from uh, that outing from Kieran Farrell, Craig? Very, very good professional, novice professional performance. Solid, one to watch. In glimpses, there was flashes of brilliance. And I think uh, in, in years to come, he is going to be something a bit special. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.